Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and I bring you all new Constellar slash Teller Knight support 2022 reveal for 2023. We have two new Momo monsters, a new XYZ, and a new spell, continuous spell confirmed for both archetypes. Uh, I really like this support. It's not the most broken shit in the world, but... It does give the deck more life as a rank 4 strategy. Not to mention, it boosts two archetypes instead of one. Constellar and Teller Knight are very similar archetypes that, for some reason, are different archetypes. Personally, they're the same fucking archetype, but they're not because they can't work exactly well together. But, Konami realizes this and added four new cards to the archetype and two of which treat themselves as always a Constellar monster and it's a Teller Knight monster. So I wonder how that's going to work with the XYZs. Because I'm pretty sure the Teller Knight XYZs require you to have Teller Knight monsters. But this card's always treated as Constellar. So I'm not sure how that ruling's going to work. But uh, we'll see. So we have... Uh, this new one right here, Constellar Knight or Teller Knight Altair. It's a level 4 light warrior effect monster. 1700 attack, 1300 defense. It's always treated as Constellar monster, which could be good, could be bad. If it's Teller Knight support, that's great. If it's Constellar support, it's great. Only issue is, because it's always treated as Constellar, can you make the Teller Knights that require Teller Knights? That's my only question, and we'll find out. So, uh, first things first, you only use the first and second effect of this effect once per turn each. If you special summon, you can target cards on the field up to the number of light dark XYZs you control, destroy them. Okay effect, it is non-targeting, oh no, it does target cards. It does target any cards and destroy them, but how many XYZs are you going to control to do that effect? Probably only like one at most. So, unless this deck gets really, really quick on like popping out like five XYZs, its effect's a little lackluster. Its second effect, which is a better part, is if a Teller Knight or Constellar monster, other than Teller Knight Alteris, is special summoned to the field, special summon this card from the graveyard, also can't declare attacks for the rest of the turn except XYZ monsters. So, the idea of this card is that it does reborn itself from grave, which is great because Knuckle Eye is a foolish burial. So, Knuckle Eye can foolish this, you summon out another one. Thus, this thing comes back, and now you have a 3 XYZ for free, which has always been the biggest issue with this deck. It takes a while for it to get started, but once it gets started, it's a resource loop that's actually pretty insane, for its time at least. Nowadays, uh, t uh, what's it called? Uh, Flunderies would laugh at it. But a uh, really interesting card. I wish it had a way to special summon itself, but I guess it's just a card you play the Foolish Burial off Knuckle Eye. And you don't really want to see it in hand. But not a bad card in general. I'm really concerned about that ruling though. For the Constellar part. Because again. If I remember correctly. Either Constellars or Teller Knights. Have a restriction that locks you. Have to, they have to be mused. With Teller Knight monsters. So this card is always going to treat Constellar. You not, might not be able to make those monsters. So I'm not sure. It might be even the same thing with Constellars. I'm, I'm misremembering the two archetypes on which one has that restriction. Or at least which XYZ. Because I know Triver, or is it, is, no, not Triver. I know the other one is generic. It just requires three level threes. I'm not sure, though, about the other ones. I'll have to double check. But ultimately, uh, I think Konami knows what they're doing. Hopefully, there is no restriction. Now we have a new one. Level 4 Light Warrior Effect Monster, 1200 attack, 1600 defense. This is Teller Knight Liar, or Lia. Uh, this card's always treated as Constellar, which is good. Uh, it'll only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn. If a Teller Knight or Constellar monster, other than Teller Knight Luna, is normal summoned onto the field, special summon this card from hand. Fantastic, must have three of a deck for both decks. Teller Knights and Constellars needed a card to special summon itself. From the hand, so bad. It's like it's a rank four deck, but they don't have cards like that, which is insane to me. Uh, this this is that that effect on its own is a ten out of ten. Its second effect, if this card is summoned, add one uh, Teller Knight spell from your deck to hand. Now that part is also really really good. Only issue I have with that card 
is if this is a constellar card, because it always creates constellar, why doesn't it search constellar spells and traps? Because to be honest, the Teller Knight's spells and traps are good. Oh, spells are good. But I, when I think of spells, or at least for these two archetypes, I think it's Teller. Uh, when I think traps, I think Teller Knight. So I'm not sure why this one searches a Teller Knight spell. Like, we'd still have a good one. But personally, in my opinion, the Teller Knight traps are what you want to search. You want to search Alpha. Because that thing's an Omnigate. Which is pretty, pretty swell. This is okay. It's, it searches the spell card, which is cool and all. I guess it helps you extend more, but I don't know. I wish it had the option of uh, adding both. And why can't it add from both archetypes? This is my only issue with this card. But it is a 1600, 1200 defense. Well, 1600 defense, 1200 attack monster that's free, special summons itself. So. We'll take what we get at this point. Like, this is better than Evil Swarms. Because they still don't have support. But, uh, I don't know. I just feel like I wanted this card to be better than it is. But, we'll see. Watch, I'll watch some crack video in like an hour or two. I'll be like, Satella Knights break the matter. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, overall, this card is alright. It looks really cool. I think all the support looks really good. I still have that concern about it always being considered a concealer monster. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just my opinion. I'm just a little, like, cautious. I'm trying to remember Satella Knights and Constellar Knights at the same time. It's not working out. I haven't played either deck in forever. I even own both decks. I, gotta ch I can check them right now. I just don't feel like checking. <laughs> but um, I don't, overall, it's decent support, and I can't wait to see what else we get. All right, so now it's time to go over our new XYZ. This is Teller Knight Sacred Cassie, or Teller Knight Constellar uh, Claudius, or Claudius, I'm not really sure. The rank four light spellcaster XYZ requires two materials, or two plus materials, level four. You can only use the first and second effect of this card once per turn. Uh, if an XYZ, if this card is XYZ summoned, uh, target one, Teller Knight or Constellar card in your graveyard at the hand. That's not a bad effect. The fact you can just add cards from graveyard by the hand is pretty nice. Uh, then you can banish one Teller Knight or Constellar monster from your hand or deck and detach one material from this card. This effect becomes that banish monster activated effect when the monster is normal summoned. I need to reread that. Well, give me one more moment. Banish one Tetella or Constellar monster from your hand or deck. Then detach one material from this card. This effect becomes that Banish monster's activate effect when that monster is normal summoned. That, I don't know, I understand that part of the meaning. At first, I thought this card was copying its effect. And I think it is, but it's worded weird. So the, I think what it's trying to say is its first effect is you target a Constellar from Grave or Teller Knight from Grave at the hand. Its second effect says you banish a Teller Knight or Constellar from your hand or deck, detach one material. This card becomes that activated effect when that monster is normal summon, meaning the normal summon effect, not its special summon effect, which doesn't mean shit because they all have effects on normal or special. So... That seems really interesting. Not sure why they worded it or that. It should have just said, this card's effect becomes that effect. I feel like that would be much better, especially since we have the new card that pops cards for XYZs, so you can copy that effect, then pop a card, which is pretty swell, or you can copy the one that adds, or you can copy anything. So this card is interesting. It's, it's a rank four 2500, but that's really all it is. Um... I don't know. I just feel like for 2022 standards, I don't think this support is the end of the world shattering like greatness. I'm happy. I'm super happy they're getting support. I just wish it wasn't so, like, generic okay stuff. I wanted Satellar slash Constellar cards to break my mind to, like, how fucking good they would be. But all these cards seem either average or okay. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. Maybe someone could prove me wrong in the comments. Uh, it's better than when they already have. I'll, I'll admit that. Constellars and Teller Knights 
desperately need support. So any support, even average support, is fantastic for them. But I don't know. I just kind of feel kind of sad. Uh, Konami's been really doing well with legacy support lately. Uh, Constellar Knights, their support is stupid. Oh, not Constellar Knights. What the fuck am I saying? The Churia support, the Super Heavy Samurai support, the Evil Eye support that just got revealed, the Generator support looks great. I just wish all these other cards looked better. But uh, now it's time to go over to spell cards. Uh, we have a continuous spell. Telonite Constellar, very original name. I guess the, the idea is that you can search it because it has both Telonite and Constellar in the name. Uh, it's a continuous spell. You can only activate one of each of his names. One to turn, and it'll use the second effect one to turn. When this card resolves, spell over one Telonite or Constellar monster from your hand or graveyard. Cool. That is a free. It's continuous, so on activation, just add, special summon to Constellar. That's pretty nice. Or from grave or from hand. That's actually pretty swell. Monster reborn. Uh, target one. A second effect says target one Telonite or Constellar XYZ monster control. Special summon from your extra deck. One Telonite or Constellar XYZ monster with a different rank from that monster control by using it as material. If this card is treated as an XYZ summon, transfer its materials from that special summon monster. Okay, that part is actually kind of insane. The idea of this card says, hey, uh, you know how it's hard to make those XYZs with three materials on it? Well, basically this card is saying you put that monster onto it as material. That's pretty, pretty good. It cheats out the XYZs. I don't think it gets to keep the material, though, so it's only going to have one material because it's transferring only the XYZ by using it as material. Then it's treated as an XYZ summon. Transfer its material to the summon monster. Okay, that, that clause right there made it better. So you do get to transfer the material. It, it, it gets around that restriction and the material of one XYZ goes to the graveyard. Because I was going to say that's kind of okay, but kind of shitty, honestly. Because if the material goes away because you made an XYZ on top, that kind of sucks. But if it's like Nova into Infinity, which this card is implying that it is... That's actually pretty solid. So you just get, make your you cheat out your free X Y Z the the ones that require three materials by using the two material ones. That's not bad actually. So I'm trying to think of a combo. You go knuckle eye, send the new one that searches this card on special. You summon out another Satella Knight. Then this guy gets special summoned from the graveyard because the Knight was summoned. Add the spell card, this one, to your hand. Make the new rank 4. The rank 4 effect, detach, copy the effect of a monster that would be summoned. Thus, you get another effect. Then you activate this spell card. Make the XYZ. That's not bad, That's not bad at all, honestly. Like, the fact that it kind of helps you get into your uh, XYZs that require three materials for both archetypes, that's kind of actually pretty solid. I can definitely see this card being played as a three of in a deck. Just because it's Monster Reborn and for that transfer effect. And it's continuous. Not a bad card at all. Uh, that is it for this deck profile. Oh, not really deck profile. These new cards reviewed. I think all these cards have potential, especially the spell card. I I know I was kind of batching in this, on this deck beforehand. Well, not really batching the archetype, but batching the support. But this spell card, plus the idea that the XYZ copies the effect, plus the fact that one of the monsters searches this card, gives this deck actually more potential than I thought when I was originally reading these cards for the first time. This spell card might make or break the new support, which is pretty, pretty solid now I think about it. But I still wish the support was better. Uh, it helps you cheat out your XYZs a lot better, but again... We do need more modern XYZs. That's the one I want to issue. Yes, the XYZs are still pretty solid, especially the one that just came off the ban list, but I feel like we still need, like, a new powerhouse XYZ that requires Teller Knight slash Contellers. Because that would actually make the deck even better. Make it not generic. Make it, you have to play Contellers or Contellers and make it so they just, like, ran in every deck. And that would actually be pretty solid. It would be really, really good support, but... That's just my opinion. Hope you all enjoyed. See ya.